So Einstein's theory of, of special relativity, uh, which he published in 1905, really gave us a revolutionary new way of understanding the structure of the universe and matched up very well with with uh, some of the measurements that were people were trying to do of the of the ether proving that that doesn't exist and that that doesn't need to exist for for uh, physics to work and also matched up very well with the the theory of electromagnetism Maxwell's equations so so that was all well and good but there was an area of physics that really didn't match up with the with the air with uh, the framework that special relativity relativity had developed and that's uh, gravity and and at the time it was the Newtonian theory of gravity gravity is a force that acts between two objects uh, that are separated by some distance and it's an attractive force and, and all that other stuff that we know about gravity so let's take a look at why these two weren't weren't matching up well the first was that uh, the first was that gravity was said to be instantaneous. I mean, you have uh, two objects that are separated by some distance uh, between their centers R, and the, the force between them, uh, the gravitational force, is just, uh, just G times the mass of the first one times the mass of the second one over... R squared, and this was said to be an instantaneous force, which even Newton himself said the idea that these two bodies are talking to each other instantaneously, and there's there's nothing actually connecting them, what was a, a ridiculous notion, even in in his own opinion. So, and in special relativity, we say that well, the fastest that information can travel is at the speed of light. So gravity should work at at most the speed of light. It it shouldn't be able to talk faster than that. So so that was uh one of the first uh issues. The second uh just kind of strange concept of gravity which uh which we take for granted every day is that objects that are of different masses fall at the same rate. So we have equal acceleration and at first it's like every single you know school child knows that if you drop two objects they'll they'll hit the ground at the same time you can you can do that experiment and it's it's ingrained in our in our brains that this is just a normal thing but it's it's really a strange effect and and let's talk a little bit about why uh, in Newtonian mechanics, we have the force law, F equals MA. And this says, if I apply a certain force to, a uh, net force to an object, and this is its mass, this will tell me how it moves. So this is all about the motion of an object, so we're going to call this mass the inertial mass. And then we have, quite separately, in, uh, in Newton's law of gravity here, the mass shows up again, and let's call this the gravitational mass, because this specific force is completely separate from, uh, from the actual law of motion. For example, I could have uh, the electric force is just equal to K times the charges of the two objects that are interacting over R squared. Now, this charge doesn't depend in any, in any way on the mass. Uh, in any direct way on the mass. So I could have some concept of a gravitational charge uh, that kind of determines the scale of this gravitational force. And there's no reason why these two should match up with each other. But experiments have shown that not only do these match up with each other, but what I'm calling the inertial mass and the gravitational mass match up with each other to ridiculous values. I think, uh, I think I've heard quoted 10 to the minus 15 uh, to a factor of 10 to the minus 15. So that is uh, a mi one part in a million billion that these two agree with each other. Uh, I'm going to check that and I'll, I'll post a comment if that's, if that's wrong. But 
the fact that these are the same is actually seems kind of strange. Uh, there are other effects with, uh, with Newtonian gravity that couldn't be accounted for, like the orbit of Mercury. So what was happening there is that, well, we have, uh, we have the sun, and we have the, uh, let's say we have the orbit of Mercury, and it's not a perfect circle, it's slightly elliptical. So it's slightly farther away from the sun when it's on one side of its orbit than it is on the other side. And according to Newtonian gravity, it should just keep following this ellipse and, and, uh, and never change in that direction. But what is actually found is instead of traveling in this orbit, what happens is it starts out in that orbit. So it starts out in that orbit, but as it goes around, the point, this is again vastly exaggerated and, and partly my own terrible drawing, the direction from the sun to that furthest point out in the orbit is actually processing, is, is changing. Whereas Newtonian gravity says it should start there and it should stay there, the orbit uh, changes in a way that doesn't agree with, uh, with Newtonian gravity. So that was another uh, strange effect that could not be explained by Newtonian gravity. Uh, another example is, according to special relativity, we found that a particle, uh, the energy of a particle equals mc squared. So I can start out, say this is the ground, I can start out with a particle and its energy is equal to its mass times the speed of light squared. And let's say I drop this object a distance h. Let's just say it's on the surface of the Earth for, for simplicity. So when it reaches down here, according to conservation of energy, the energy is going to equal the energy that it started with plus mgh, which is the gravitational potential energy that, uh, that we got from this. Now let's say that this particle, uh, this particle uh, is radioactive and, and breaks apart and turns into light. So now this is going to be a beam of light and the energy of that beam of light, we're going to denote that E gamma, is still going to be equal to mc squared plus mgh. But photons, the photons which make up light, according to Newton, have, uh, the photons which make up light are massless, so according to, according to Newton's laws, they shouldn't have any, any uh, gravitational force on them. So I can take that photon and I can fire it back up into the air, so its energy is still going to be mc squared plus mgh, and here, let's say it reacts again and creates, uh, creates a new particle. And now this particle is going to have energy mc squared plus mgh. So I'm right back where I was, where I started with, but now somehow I have more energy. Somehow in going through this process, I've created a perpetual motion machine. I've created energy out of nothing because of this assumption that photons or light does not, uh, does not interact with gravity. So this is, a, again, another question of why is, uh, why is Newton's theory of gravity not matching up with special relativity, not matching up with those predictions? And these weird effects, uh, when Einstein looked at these weird effects, he said, well, something's not going right here. I'm going to need a new, a new theory of gravity. And that theory of gravity, uh, about 10 years later, he finally, he finally developed, and that is what general relativity is. And in the same way that special relativity uh, changed our notion of the structure of space and time and introduce all of these strange effects, general relativity on an even larger scale, I think most people would say, completely changed our understanding of space and time and matter and how those things interact. And, and we'll talk about uh, some of those ideas 
in, in the next few videos.